Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. This is the second episode of the inventory system from A to Z. Inventories are all about items, holding them, interacting with them, throwing them, getting items information, anything that has to do with items. In episode 1, we have learned how to set up inventory menu by UI systems, open and close inventory menu, completed player movement and pickup items using scriptal objects to save different items assets and achieve one add item function. Today, we are going to complete this inventory systems. First, we will create remove item function and customize the rest of item prefabs. Then, we need to create one tooltip which display the detailed information from each slot's buttons. Third steps, we are going to test our game and fix some errors. The link for the project repository is on the description below. So feel free and go ahead and check them out for yourselves. Now, let's get into the video. Now, we are going to create a new function called remove item and taking as a parameter an item type variable called underscore item. This parameter lets us know what kind of item we are trying to give up, trying to throw. There are also two situations we have to consider. First, if this underscore item we are going to give up is one existing item we have in our inventory menu. What shall we do? The second situation is, if this underscore item we are going to throw is a new item in our bag. In other words, we don't have this underscore item, but we want to throw these items. What shall we do? We use list.contents to determine whether this underscore item is one of elements in the items list. This method return one boolean variable if items.contents return true, which means underscore item is an element in the items list. We need to loop through all items in our inventory menu. If underscore item is equal to one of items in items list, we can access its count number from item number, then decrease by one. Once the count number minus until zero, we need to remove this underscore item from the items list, as well as the items numbers list. Otherwise, in else statements, there is no underscore item in our bag. We can simply put debug.log to test it. Actually, this situation will never happen during gameplay, because the remove item function will be attached on the close button, and the close button will set active to be false once there is no item on this slot. Finally, don't forget to call display item function. We can press the keyboard N to test remove item function. We create one temporary item type variable for test. Later, we'll remove the update function and this item variable. Drag and drop the poison item assets into that empty slot. Currently, we only have two items in the inventory. We can press keyboard M to add more items box. Then, once we press the keyboard N, the console window tells us there is no poison in our bag, only box and beers in our bag. Now let's drag and drop the beer onto remove item variable. If we press the keyboard N during gameplay, the count number decreases by 1. Once the beer count number is equal to 0, item beer will remove from items list as well as the item number list. Cool. However, beer items still display on the game view. Back to Visual Studio, we have to change some logic inside display items function. In this case, the reason why we cannot see the correct items is that we did not update our items correctly once we threw these items. We have for loop all items in our game. Actually, we should for loop all slots in the inventory first. Once i is less than the number of item elements in the items list, we will copy and paste this part in here. In else statements, if i is greater or equal than items.count, in other words, there is no item inside their slots. We can copy and paste this part in here. 
In order to represent there is no item in the slot, change the color alpha channel to zero and assign none to the image dot sprite property. Also change the count text alpha channel to zero as well. Assign no to the context property. For the close button image, set active to be false. If you go back into Unity and run our scene, we can see that we can easily add box and remove box on inventory menu. Now we leave the last box in our bag. The value is 1 inside item number list. Once we press the keyboard N again, nice, we successfully update the items and shuffle the inventory. This time, we would like to add poison when we press M, remove beer when we press N. Now we have 24 poisons in the game. If we remove beer from inventory, it works. Perfect. There are only poisons and box in our bag. If we press the keyboard N again, the console window will show us the relative information. Now let's try to remove the public add item function and the public remove item function outside update methods. Once our player pick up items, we definitely want to call add item function. The parameter is one item type. We create one public item type variable called item data. Go back to Unity, select one of item prefabs. Drag and drop the correct item data inside that empty slot in the inspector. If we enter the play mode, we can see that, at the beginning of the game, we have 3 box and 8 beers. We can control the player and pick up one box. Now we have 4 box in our bag. Cool. Now this time, select the poison game object and duplicate it several times. Then test again. Create another C sharp script called item button, which will call remove item function from game manager script. Additional, this C sharp script will attach to each slot button game object. The first public is one integer number that is called button ID. Each item slot has their unique ID. Once we press the close button, we will call the remove item function by using game manager dot instance dot remove item. The parameter is one item type. We create one public item type variable called this item. So, how to get access of this item variable in different slots? We create one private function called get this item. The return type is one item type. Loop through all of items in this game. If i is equal to button id, we will assign this certain item to this item. Finally, return this item. This function will help us easily access what kind of item is located on this slot. First, let's delete the rest of slots and only leave the first one. Search for item button component. Go to close button image and add button component. We are going to add onclick event. So drag and drop my slot game object in these slots. And I will go up to the drop down menu and select close button function. If you don't see this function here, making sure you have set it to the public inside of your script. Then select our slot game object and duplicate it 20 times. Don't forget to drag and drop all of new slot game objects onto these empty array slots. Set each item button Different button ID.
However, you can try to test our current process. We cannot remove items during gameplay. The reason is that inside item button script, we use get this item to get access of the detail item in this slot. However, inside close button function, the parameter we should use get this item instead of this item because this item is known. It's empty at the beginning of the game. We didn't call get this item function in the past. We can use get this item function to return the item type variable and pass in as parameter inside remove item function. Now let's try to press the close button and remove the poison in our bag. Something looks weird and nothing happens on my computer. Maybe it works in your project. I will explain the reason later. However, if we try to press the close button and remove the beer, it works. Why? The reason is that our inventory title text space is overlaid our close buttons on the first row. In other words, we actually click the inventory title text space instead of the close buttons. The first solution, we can simply change the text space. Or you can choose to add canvas group component and press the block recast property. Both of solutions can work. If we have a bunch of items in our bag, once our bag is full, we cannot pick up any items anymore. So this is the reason I created 22 items. So we can put if statements inside pick up item script. Once items count is greater than slot size. We are not allowed it to get any other new items. Now it's time to create another item prefabs for our game. Here I create all of 22 items. We need to add each item access information. Then create the rest of item prefabs. After that, we can run our scene and look at the game view. We can pick up different items and remove item by pressing its own close button. Perfect. Now let's start to make the tooltip. Create an empty game object to manage all of items. Enable item menu game object. Once our mouse or cursor enter the slot area, we want to get this item detail information and display on the tooltip. So go to item button script, which has been attached to each slot. Interface to implement if you wish to receive on point enter, on point exist callbacks. Interface is like a contract and whatever is in that contract must be implemented. We can press the drop down menu and implement interface. Then, remove the content inside these two functions. If it's your first time to use these two interfaces, you can put debug.log to test. In order to check for convenience, we want to make this item variable visible in the inspector. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out as well as expected. Because we want to get access of this item value. However, this item is equal to no because we did not call get this item function. In other words, each time at the beginning of the game, this item value is equal to no. We cannot get any value from this variable. Additional, we have to make sure this item is not equal to no before debug.log. 
if we enter the play mode, this time we can get the detailed information from each slot when mouse enter or mouse exits from each slot. The console window item information should be exactly the same with this item variable on inspector. Select the inventory background image. I will create one UI image and resize it. Drag and drop one new image in the source image and rename it. Then create a UI text element which I will place to the center of the tooltip image. Adjust text space and change its font. Add outline component. Create C# script called tooltip. Before we get started, let's import UnityEngine.UI so we can create and modify UI relative variables. Then create one new text variable called detail text to hold a reference to the UI text component on our UI text game object. At the beginning, we want to hide the tooltip which means set active this game object to be false. This script will be attached to the tooltip UI image. Then we create two public functions to show or hide the tooltip game object. Create another public function called update tooltip and take in as a parameter one string variable called underscore detail text. This parameter lets us know we are trying to collect the detail information from each button. We can simply write detail text dot text is equal to underscore detail text. Create one public function called set position, and its parameter is one vector two type variable called underscore position. Inside the curly brackets, transform dot position is equal to underscore position. Actually, we should write transform dot local position. I will fix this error later. I will drag and drop the tooltip C# -sharp script onto tooltip UI image. Then drag the tooltip text into that empty slot. Go to item button script. Create one tooltip type variable called tooltip. Once the mouse enters this button area, we want to not only show tooltip, also update the text information above. We can simply display the item description first. Later, we'll use string builder class, which represents a mutable string of characters. Once the mouse exits this button area, we want to hide the tooltip and reset the text information. Back to Unity, select all slots in this project. Drag and drop the tooltip game object into that empty slot. Now we can delete the serialized field and make this variable invisible on inspector. We can run our scene and look at the game view. Cool. This time, we can receive each item detail information and display on the tooltip. The next step, we want to set tooltip position instead of always stay on the center of the canvas. We have created one public function called setPosition inside tooltip script. We can say rec transform utility dot screen point to local point in rectangular. The first parameter is the rec transform to find a point inside. We can find a game object by name. Then as rec transform because the first parameter is the rec transform type. The second parameter is the camera associated with the screen space position. We use import dot mouse position. The third parameter is the screen space position. In this case, our tooltips display on the overlayer screen space, so we can use no. The last parameter is the point in local space of the rack transform. We can create one vector2 variable called position. Then call set position function and its parameter is that newly variable. Making sure it should be transform.local position instead of transform.position. Transform.local position 
can represent the position of the transform relative to the parent transform. In other words, to a tip game object, its position should be relative to the inventory background image game object. If you find your tooltip blink each frame, you should adjust your pivot point, making sure this blue circle is outside of your space. The pivot point determines your tooltip's original position. Go to Item Button Scrape. Now, let's put more information inside tooltip instead of only item description. Let's create a new function called getDetailText, which will return one string type variable. I will take in as a parameter an int type variable called underscore item. This parameter will let us know what kind of item information we are going to get. Inside parentheses, get detail tags this item. Before we get started, if underscore item is equal to no, which means there is no item in this button. In other words, the tags content is empty. Let's import system.tags so we can create string builder class instance. Create a new instance of string builder. Append format methods appends the string returned by processing a composite format string which contains zero or more format items to this instance. Each format item is replaced by the string represent of a single argument. We use curly brackets 0 to represent the second parameter value. Bank slash n allows us to break a new line. Before we get start writing other information, return string builder dot to string methods, which returns a string. It internally converts character's buffer of the string builder into a string object. Likewise, we can use the send step to display the item description by using append format methods. If you want to add more information in one line, we can use curly brackets 1. Then create the third parameter. Save my script and switch bank. We can get each item detail information on tooltip. Perfect. We can use rich text to incorporate multiple font styles and sizes. The markup system is inspired by HTML. The basic idea is that a section of text can be enclosed inside a pair of matching text. After customizing your own style text format, we can run our scene and look at the game view. You can test many times to find your favorites. It seems like we have completed our inventory system. However, there is a huge error on this game. If we enter the play mode, we can press the close button. Once one item count number is equal to zero, and we remove the item from inventory menu. Then our inventory menu shuffle or update it, but the tooltip still display the previous item information. So how do we solve this problem? Go to item button scrape. Let's first use public access modify because we'll use this variable outside of this class. Then move to game manager scrape. Create a new function called reset button items. Then create one item button type variable called this button. This variable will check down which kind of item button our mouse are hovering on. Also, create an array of type item button called item buttons. We will add all unique item buttons to this array. Select Game Manager, drag and drop all slots on this empty array. 
Inside Reset Button Items function, loop through all item buttons in this game. Once i is less than item size, we will assign each item type variable to each item button public variable, this item. Otherwise, set this item to none. Then, call this function inside remove item. Go to item button script. Once we press the close button, we will update all of items. This item is equal to get this item function. Once this item is not equal to no, we still display the toe tip. Otherwise, we have to hide the toe tip. Perfect. Alright, this is the end of this video. I will upload the detailed process of the inventory series in the next few days. If you don't like my assets or cannot follow some steps because of the speed up, I highly recommend you to watch that video. In the next episode, we'll have a look at how to set up Hexen Telemap and how to control one player in that 2D world. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. If you enjoyed this video and found helpful, be sure to hit the like button, turn on the post notification, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There is much more to come. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. You are the best.